I was uh, a little amazed that a few of the people during our various presentation didn't know my boss, Seth, over here. Seth Davis is the president and CEO of Stern Pinball. So he is my boss. We're going to talk a little bit more than 40 years. Uh, the history of the Stern family in pinball goes back more than 40 years. My father started as a game operator. Some of you have heard this before. Some of you hadn't. Uh, and as, as I digress again, many of you probably haven't heard this. I wouldn't think so after as many times have I said it. But I'm amazed at how many of you all that toured our factory hadn't toured any of our factories before in all the years. There's so many people who either didn't get to go on the tour or are new to coming to this show. It is The show is much bigger. Uh, it's, it's enlarged 100,000 square foot. It is really encouraging and very happy to see all the new people. A large number of people from outside of our country, more than, a, I'd, I'd like to see statistics on that, but more than, uh, than normal than uh, I've seen in the past. Uh, so. It's very, very encouraged. We're going to tell you, as I said, a little bit about where we come from. Uh, my father started as a game operator. There were collectors. There weren't enthusiasts back in, in the day. There were game operators. He started as a game operator in the 30s. Uh, as many operators wanted games cheaper and sooner than his other operator competitors had them, so he became a distributor. Eh, so he, This was in Philadelphia, so he stayed basically as a distributor. Uh, his operating company was named Scott Cross. Didn't mean anything. A friend of his in advertising gave it that name. Um, so um, he became a distributor. And in 1947, as a 35-year-old punk kid, I can say that because I'm 79, uh, I was two in 47, he came to Chicago to see Harry Williams, the great pinball designer, who had a was probably a 39-year-old punk kid and had a, a small pinball company, a small game company, had been around, had been in you know, exhibit and Bally and what have you, uh, and sat behind Harry's desk, kidding around, put his feet up on the desk and said, why don't you sell me the company? And Harry said, well, I'll go up in my airplane and think about it. Flew around Chicago for three hours, came down and uh, sold Sam half of uh, half of Williams, and that's how we got got in the pinball business. Um, so, I, I say it's not my father's pinball company, and it's not my father's pinballs. What we make today is significantly different, but we'll talk more about that. Let me just show you a couple pictures here. Um, those pic those three pictures. The uh, he's got Harry. He's the bald one. Uh, looking over a couple of the sales guys. There's Harry Mabs over there. No, there's Harry. Never mind. This, this, this goes way, way back. These were these the people, how they lived in those years. Uh, that was Harry's boat. Uh, that was Harry's airplane. That was the starlight room where the executives in the Little Williams Company had, had lunch every day. And they called it the starlight room because there were light fixtures that looked like stars, that kind of thing. Um, the... Um, um, the original factory was on Huron Street in Chicago, and it was six floors, a little different than our big factory today. It was six floors. The first floor was Jack's holding up the second floor. The third floor was Jack's holding up the fourth floor. And, not surprising, the fifth floor was Jack's holding up the sixth floor. And that's where they started out. Um, this is, uh, this is, uh, Harry and Sam. Actually, that's at the old Chicago coin, Chicago Dynamic Industry Factory. They were looking over something. They were together forever. Um, the other pictures are from Williams. Uh, and with Chicago Dynamic, uh, Chicago coin is the Chicago, it was Stern Electronics when we had taken that over in 76. Um, the, um, this is Sam, this is me, this is Harry. Uh, Harry was like a second father, he was always around. He was always designing with us. It was 
one time, uh, Harry came came from Harry lived in Cal Harry lived in California, so he comes from California with a design, and uh, you know, yeah, they were done on drafting tables then. And if you change it, it was change. I'm going to watch for a minute. Change with a uh, you know with big erasers and drawing and all that. So here we are. I go with them. I, I pick Harry up. We go to Sam's apartment, lay it out. The three of us laying on the floor looking at this drawing, and Sam said, "Oh, this is good. This is good." Um, uh, but you ought to change this section here. So I take Harry back. He doesn't have a drafting table in his hotel. I take him to this hotel. Um, next morning, pick him up, take him to work. Hi, George. Take him to work. And uh, that's George Gomez coming in. Uh, <laughs> and uh, here he's got the drawing already changed and fixed. Well, obviously, he didn't change and fix the drawing. He had done two. He knew what Sam was going to criticize and came with that drawing. So we were doing, you know, our first, this is a lot of history. I'll do this anyways. Our first uh, game at the old Stern was Stern Pinball, or Pinball by Stern. And then we were going to make another game, Stingray. Well, you use mass ROMs. There were no way that you could get uh, mass ROMs redone quickly. There were no EPROMs in those days. So I said, okay, instead of this switch being A and this switch being B, I'll stack the switches and they'll be A, B, and so forth. And I show this to Sam, but I know he's not going to like it. So I put a flipper right in the middle of the play field. And he said, well, you can't do that. You can't. Well, you can't do the flipper in the middle of the play field. I said, okay, we'll take the flipper out. Same thing as Harry did. Got away with it, and Sam let me do it. Um, it's it's, it's, um, the two of them would do this all the time. It was very, very interesting. So any event, and let's see. Here's through the years, more of us. These buildings, the uh, uh, the 40,000 square foot building is where we were in our second building in, uh, in uh, Melrose Park. We started out in my basement. In 80, in, in, for Dade's Pinball, which later became Sega Pinball, which later was Stern Pinball. Same, same company, just changed the owners. So we started out in that uh, basement, uh, and then we got a, a factory in uh, Melrose Park with 25,000 square feet, and then we ended up with 40,000 square foot. And then the, the building on the, the upper right corner is our building that we just left a year or so ago, 105,000 square foot. So the company has grown along the way. But the other, the older buildings at the bottom were at, were at, were William's second building after Huron, 4242 West Fillmore on the uh, near west side of Chicago. A um, little bit of a rough neighborhood. Uh, the uh, Fillmore police station was down the street and they would steal the batteries out of the cop cars. So it was a little rougher then. Uh, now it was it, uh, now it's a totally blighted neighborhood. Um, but the inside of that building, this is what a factory looked like then. How many of you took our tour today, uh, yesterday, whatever day it was? Okay, you see what this factory is. Little different. Little different. This was mass manufacturing back in the day, uh, and it was significantly different than uh, than what we had what we have today. These are pictures of the 2020 Janus Avenue, our first factory in Melrose Park, inside it. And then we moved to, um, we moved to that second factory. Our, our first one was 1990 Janus Avenue, then 2020. Then we moved to Lunt, the building that I showed you a minute ago. And from, from there, we moved to our current building that you all toured. There, you can see again, looking at this, and I don't know how many of you toured any of our other buildings, but uh, I asked earlier, this, this is significantly different than, we're building, than our building today. What we have today, we're very proud of, with modern manufacturing building, the only modern manufacturing building I've ever seen in the game business, in, in the video or, coin or, or pinball. Business. I've seen all of the other factories. I, I remember going in the Gottlieb factory that was supposed to be the Cadillac, and it wasn't. It wasn't that great. The one over in Bensonville. Um, I've been in the Williams 
factory in the, on 3401 North California, because we moved in there in 64. I've been in the Williams factory in um, Waukegan, which was a beautiful building, nothing like the efficient, fully air-conditioned factory that we have today. We can, we can build better games in a better place and with better quality in the building that we're in right now. It's like a real manufacturer. It's like if you went to go tour Ford and see it. And again, Sam used to say, give people a shitty place to work and they do sh they'll do shitty work. We've come a long, long way. I got to, uh, there's one slide, a couple slides here that I just want to show uh, that show something from the past that I just thought found interesting. This is a picture of uh, artwork from Sotheby's. Uh, it, it, they, they were auctioning it off. It went for a hundred and some thousand dollars. It's a painting. This particular artist, some of you know him, and I've, his name slips my mind. Thank you. I knew, I knew you would get that. You've done that for me before. Thank you. So, so he would do paintings. He would do studies in color. Um, but what's interesting here, you see at the bottom, upside down, the word, oh boy. That's because it's a Williams. Oh boy. And that's the reflection of the back glass on the playfield glass all those years ago. This is nothing new. The non-reflective glass is great. They didn't have it back in the day. He picked that up there. And this is the back glass for our first Stern Electronics game. And I only do, uh, show it because I like the artwork. It was a, a Chicago coin calendar that I turned into a I asked them to turn into, I can't, I don't do art, turn into a, uh, a back glass for us. It's in, a f it's in an old wood frame, and in, in, uh, it's around our offices somewhere. I don't know where. Um, the other one I'm going to show you, and then we're going to really talk about what we're doing today. This is Gamatron. Gamatron was a conversion for uh, Valley Games. I proved that conversions were not such a good idea. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the other people didn't listen to me. That was one of the concepts of uh, P2K, that there'd be, you know, you'd be able to convert the game, and you trade games in. We, we, this was much better. It, it was based on Flight 2000, and it was actually, uh, it just unplugged something. Did we die? Did we die? We'll, we'll help you out, Gary. There, <laughs> we're plugged in. And uh, but see, technology. But technology is an important word. We'll come to that. There, up. <coughs> so I can see it. <laughs> I can see it. You can see it. Any event, just uh, just these are just the sides. I just find it interesting. It was on. It was on a uh, a, uh, a a a a, 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 a prep. Um, I, I do see, see. I do seem like Biden and and uh, and and Trump. I can't. I lose my place. Uh, it it was uh, in a. Uh, it was in a. It was it was it was in a presentation we did before. You, those of you know who know who knew Flight 2000, you can see this is a narrow body version of it, which played better than the wide body version. And the only reason I show it is that is that we. Uh, we, we, we showed that you couldn't, uh, there was no need to convert pinball, you better to trade it in. And we came out with it at the same time that, uh, uh, that Steve had high speed and better to buy high speed than, uh, than, uh, than to try and convert your Bally game. And one more old one, here's the picture of Joe Kamenko and myself. And we, we, this was that we did for the uh, brochure for uh, for that game, and I get a kick out of it because I, I, I would wear th um, banker suits with braces and French cuffs to work every day, but they dress me up for this, and you notice they spike my hair up, and so then I put my suit back on after the uh, the uh, and, and Cameco had a had a DeLorean. Uh, I, I put my uh, suit back on and went across the street and sat at the bar at this fancy restaurant. Uh, with my hair up like that. I couldn't do that anymore. I couldn't do that anymore because I don't have enough hair. I couldn't pull it off. Uh, and this was the, the car uh, shown on the, on the game. Uh, just, you know, just some interesting things that I found I thought were fun to play with.
today. This is what you saw the other day. So I'm going to let Seth take this for a while, and then I'll come back, if he lets me. <laughs> He's the boss. <laughs> Not exactly. Uh, thanks, Gary. Gary asked me to, uh, if we're talking about 40 years of pinball, we should talk about today, and we should also talk about the future. So um, thank you to all of you who came and toured the factory and have got a chance to see it. Uh, you're all part of it, so it's, we're gr glad to have you there. And if you haven't had a chance, you should come next year when we do it again. Um, so we have made uh, a ton of great machines, just all in this year. Everything on this page, Jaws, WIC, X-Men, Godzilla 70th Black and White, Metallica. We also did a special home edition version of the Jurassic Park uh, pin that we had done a number of years ago as well. Um, it's amazing what we can do in the factory and with the team that we have and you know, create this many games just all in one year and the year's not even over yet, right? So um, really a testament and for those of you that stick around to hear the teams talk, um, they're gonna talk about a bunch of these games and how they got created and made. Our games, as Gary talked about, are designed and made in a modern way. Um, you know, we have a lot of work that goes into just all the design on George's teams, um, whether they be sculpts, whether they be the SolidWorks designs, whether they be the electrical engineering, just everything. It's all done with modern tools, modern technology, modern processes. And then we got a couple of pictures of uh, the factory um, and what it is and sort of how far pinball's come and how far we've come. And we've got connectivity across all of these, right? Now on top of just making modern machines, we've got um, hundreds of thousands of connected machines and hundreds of thousands of players that are connected as well. Um, and there's gonna be more and more coming with that. Um, we will be doing a UI update for our Insider Connected app that will drop in the next couple of weeks. So you all will get a better experience there that will make sure you actually stay logged in instead of logging you out. <laughs> Uh, so we have, we have fixed the remember me function. Um, there's some updated navigation to make it easier to find stuff like badges that you can't find very easily right now. Um, all the things we've learned over the past couple of years. Um, there's a new game filter. You'll be able to filter on the different game experiences and so you can see JAWS specific information rather than trying to wander your way around between all the games. Uh, we have some new community features where you'll be able to see some high scores from the community and some other people who are playing at the same time just make the experience feel a little more alive because it is. A lot of you are playing all the time. Um, and it's fun to see that other people are playing when you're playing. Uh, we're gonna continue to do more of that. All right. And these games are played by the best community, which is you all. Um, you know, Insider Connected only works with a community of people that play, uh, a community of people that enjoy these games. So you see some of the Jaws launch parties and the Stern Army and sort of everybody that's here that participates and is all of a a part of this. We're all part of it together. You can help create the pinball future. Um, keep providing your feedback. Uh, we know you always do, um, but we, we've sent out some surveys. If you haven't filled out your survey on the titles you want to see, let us know. It's in your inbox if you're on Insider Connected, and we want to know what you want to see because we want to give you what you want to see. Um, and help new people. Help new pinheads. Everyone in here has a love for pinball in common. Um, as much as there are sort of gripes and other things that people have between each other. It's a fun conversation, but everybody here is united by pinball and has more in common than they don't. And there's a lot of new people that are just learning about pinball. This is a picture of some people looking at the Jurassic Park game at Costco. And I'll tell you, we keep getting, they still make those things from all of those folks, right? There's just a lot of folks in the world that don't know, like, like you all do, that, that pinball is something you can be a part of, that they still make them, that they still own them. So. Introduce one of your friends or family to pinball. Introduce, I mean, that's how we got here, and this is so big, is you all kept introducing more people to pinball. And keep going, keep going. It's, it's fun, I know you all have fun doing it, and there's plenty of other people that could really enjoy it um, as well. So with that, Gary wants to tell you about our mission statement. <laughs> okay. You know, when you get to be old, you get to be, they, they either put you out the pasture or you're the, or you're the evangelist. I'm the evangelist, okay? So what are we trying to do? We used to talk about being a lifestyle brand. Well, we're much more than a lifestyle brand. We manufacture games. We're a game manufacturer. But the important thing, i got to be careful not to unplug this. The important thing 
is we manufacture games because we're game designers. What's so important is making the games, games that are fun. And the whole thing's about fun. These aren't heart love machines. It's just a matter of having, have, you know, creating fun for people. Um, so our, our, our vision is to create compelling entertainment that inspires a lifetime love of games, sparks passions, forges friendships, and connects people everywhere through fun, innovative, technologically advanced pinball games and experiences. Seth mentioned the community. We talk about Forge's friendships. We talk, uh, you notice manufacturing is not mentioned in here. We are great manufacturers. We've got a great factory. We're very proud of it. We can make great games that work. That's one of the things that make our games pretty unique. We may, we're very, con very concerned that they work. Some of you are nodding yes. Our games work. Okay, not 100%. But they work, okay? And you know it's important that we have operators, that we have first-time buyers at Costco or wherever to enlarge the community, the uh, forges friendships, and that maybe become enthusiasts, collectors, and maybe get so many games they decide to be operators. The, the president of the AMOA, the, the association, uh, of operators started out with one game he took to a bowling alley after he had refurbished it and said, hey, you don't have any pinball, can I put it there? All the games in the bowling alley and, a, and about another 2,000 games, including a lot of pinball machines, Paradise Pinball is the name of the company, came about because he started as an enthusiast. And so, you know, there's this cycle that we are creating. We don't manif ma mention manufacturing here, but you got to be able to make them and these aren't made in China. We're very proud to be American manufacturers. Forges friendships, connects people, community. Through fun, the game's got to be fun. Technologically advanced. Technologically advanced. Technology is the future. My partner and I went to, I'm going to call it speed dating, for, uh, for um, bankers, in, in, in investors in companies. Every product that was interesting there, except for two, had connectivity. No, nobody was interested in any of the products that weren't connected, except pinball was interesting, and there was somebody who had this machine that you took home, and you could sharpen your kids' hockey skates, and if your kids play hockey, uh, you know you have to keep taking them uh, to the... Uh, uh, to, to the skates to the to the store every week to be sharpened, and this is a point where Seth tells me that the uh, hockey skate sharpener now has an app as well. There's an app. <laughs> There's an app. Everything is connected. I start my my car with my phone. I start my uh, my dishwasher, my washer dryer. It's calling me. I have a new one. It's telling me when to take the laundry out. Everything is connected, and it's because you can do so much more. Uh, you know. It, it, Who's got a flip phone versus your phone that you have today that's doing everything from the cloud? Everything, everything is, uh, is, is up in the cloud, it's connected. You, you, how many people are watching ABC, NBC, or how many people are streaming? The world today is all about technology, and it's all about different kind of connectivity. And you all, you all will th have thanked you thank me, uh, make a little badge, uh, Gary Stern saved pinball. Or years ago, um, Walter Day's card of me, which me holding from years ago, Gary Stern saved pinball. Don't thank me for saving pinball. Thank us for taking pinball in the future. Because if we don't go in the future, then we're going to be boxes on four legs. We're not going to get there. All games are, 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 are progressing. So what, what does it mean? It means when the games are connected, yeah, sure, we can download code. That's pretty trivial. The operator gets better information. The, the homeowner gets better information about his games. There are, Seth talked about some of the different things we're doing with the, with the app and with the play features. Um, you know, we, uh, there, there are parts of the, you can play the game unconnected but you get to do more if it's connected and you, there are some, some of the rules we just can't do in, in, the, in the hardware we have. It has to be done in the cloud. The, 
on WIC. We sent out contracts. You couldn't do that if the game wasn't connected. That was fun. People, people ran to play the games because it's fun. And we're all about fun. But technology leads it forward. We, we, we had to level up, you know, where you could start the game here and finish, you know, fit, get, start again at the same level in Germany. And, and Wick, that's, you know, that, that's because of the technology. There's so much more that we can do. But the other thing we can do with it is we can learn what you want. We've sent out a survey. What games do you want? How do we send out the survey? We didn't put it on pin side. That'd be crazy. That'd be, that'd be chaotic. <laughs> but we know a bunch of you, or you know us. So with technology, we can, we can talk to you. And you can talk to us. And some operators can talk to their, their I mean, we just scratch the surface of this, talk with, their, you know, with the players. We get information. George used to have a couple beta testers and try and figure out how to, how to adjust the game. Is it playing right? Uh, is the feature being made enough time? He can look now. He can tell because it's feeding back to him and it's telling him. All the games out there are telling him. And there's, you know, We've got tens and tens of thousands of games uh, attached to Insider Connected, hundreds of thousands of players. And this is all, every other, every other device that you have is, is feeding information back to that creator, that manufacturer, whatever, so that they can make a better product. And pinball should be no different. We should be able to improve the game. So. We, with, by us making I games insider connected, it's not just you know something trivial. It's we can really know how to design and know more about the games, and with that, get make you better games, make you better players sometimes. There's just so much further we can go. Now, we can do this because because. You know, we decided, my partner and I, to invest a lot of money, and George had a vision, and uh, his folks created it. We're unique in being able to do it. We're unique because we invested the money, and nobody else will ever be able to do this. And you can say, well, this is arrogant. We have scale. We have over 100,000 games that are Spike 2 games that can be attached. And as we improve Spike, those games will be able to be attached. Nobody else will have scale. Oh, they got 5,000 games, 10,000 games in existence. That's not enough to be meaningful. It's all based, you know, G George didn't, uh, X, uh, Microsoft games didn't based it on Xbox Live. You know, they've got a lot of games. And by the way, when they started Xbox Live, they didn't know exactly where they were going. They had a plan. And they change based on the customers. We had a plan, and somewhere down the way, we were going to have leaderboards, but we saw that we needed to have them right away, so we listened to, to what you all said. The point of, of it, and again, I sound obnoxious when I say this, is we're investing in the future of pinball to take pinball to the next level, not to save pinball. We, we didn't save pinball. We made pinball exist so that we can take it to the future. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to grow this thing, and we're going to make it a better and better game. God, you guys are quiet listening to me. <laughs> in my, in my, in, I think some people have heard me do this, and George will probably refuse. In my heart of hearts, I know that we are going to make a better product and a better game for you. And we appreciate your support, because with your support, we can do it. And again, I'm sorry to be obnoxious. We're the only ones that are going to be able to do it for you and for us. So with that, we should probably ought to take some questions. All right. Uh, yeah. They're having a private conversation up there now. <laughs> well, no, we're, we're working out here because 
Um, not only are you guys recording us, but we're recording us. Ah, okay. All this right. This is so important. This show, this show's amazing this year. You know, it's, it's, uh, it, I don't know, it's uh, up to 100,000 square feet. I don't know how many of you all are here. Uh, but it's, the growth is great, and it's really important, and we're doing video. We think it's important enough. We're, this is great stuff. We're going to use it to, to grow pinball and, and hype pinball. All right, so I was lucky enough to take the tour yesterday. Thanks for opening up your facility to us. Really appreciate that. Um, I see a very efficient design and manufacturing process with what you're doing. Um, however, it seems like the format of the pinball machine is very locked into its existing format to optimize and maintain efficiency. So are you doing anything to move in any other directions uh, to be a little bit more creative than the existing format that exists today along the lines of like a bonsai run or joust head to head or any uh, curved play field, anything Anything different and unique to, to add to the creativity process? George probably answered better than I can, but first thing I'm going to tell you is that, uh, you know, they're always trying some different things. Um, I will point out, from, you know, I'm old school. Pinball is, is a sport, and when you change the size of the tennis court, and make a round pinball or an end-to-end -end pinball or th something like that, you, you create havoc. We did, uh, 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 Joe and I did Total Recall. The idea was to have a two-player pinball. When you do end-to-end, -end, the guy who's doing good doesn't get to play because the ball's in the other guy's side. So we made two play fields on an angle with, with one that you, on a higher play field, and if you got up there, you still got to play. You wanted to get to the top one. And so you had this angle play thing, and I designed, I designed, and George will tell you that I can design things for him. I designed, <laughs> I designed he the carton. I designed the carton. It was a pie-shaped carton, and I, find pi I found round trucks, and we were going to transport these games all over the world in round trucks. Uh, no, it, seriously, it, there is certain physics. Harry Williams said um, that, and again, I, that Flight 2000 was not as good a game playing as Gamatron. A narrow body version. Wide games, too big. The ball floats, too much geometry. Uh, Neil Falconer was a uh, designer in our industry. He's since passed, but whenever anybody, uh, he was Valley, he was with us. Whenever anybody came out with a, um, a, uh, uh, a wide play field game when people started making them, he updated his resume because he had to get out of the business. We were failing. The business, pinball business was failing. There is a court, but they, there are different mechanical things that they're working on, they're trying to do. It's mechanical action pinball. But the most important thing with pinball and its advancement is insider connected. And we can do so much more with that, and you're going to see a lot more. <laughs> insider connected is the future. Connectivity is the future of every product. You want to add anything to that? That's good. That's good. <laughs> I'm just going to add that uh, whenever Gary wants George to move faster, he tells him he'll design it for him, and it gets magically done faster so Gary doesn't get to design it. <laughs> <laughs> if, we have if we have enough time, we'll talk about how we fix my wife's balcony and the dog problem. <laughs> just probably on what you just said about inside of that, when you go into arcades and stuff and you see the, the leaderboards and stuff like in, in the arcades, is there any plans to introduce that for home users so that we can look at that and see scores and leaderboards and people who are playing, like you said, at the same time and we can just look over instead of having to get our phones out, etc. Yeah, the, for home there there is uh, discussion and thought about doing that. The, the there's been a couple challenges for us. One is just prioritizing all the things that we want to do. Any of the folks that, that came to some of our sessions to prioritize Insider Connected stuff saw the, the laundry list we get of ideas. So some of it is prioritization. The other thing for that one is, you know, the leaderboards that are out in public locations are enjoyable by everybody. They're good for the operator. They're good for the community. They're good for everyone. Um, small amounts of individual leaderboards get a lot of play from a lot of people. The challenge becomes that you know we pay for cloud services and AWS and all of these things, and if they go to 
you know, 10 times as many, 100 times as many homes and don't get played by very many people. It's sort of a big cost trade-off there. And so we're trying to be thoughtful about figuring out how we do that in a really efficient way. We know you all want it. We want to deliver it. We just got to figure out how to do it in a way that makes sense for both of us to be able to do that just because those won't get played as much as the ones in locations do. Uh, hi, sorry, I, um, I could probably help you with that, but um, <laughs> the, I'm the, sure you could. Yeah. So I have to <laughs> ask my usual question, and you've heard it before. So we love coming here to the U.S., all of international guys. It's, it's like a pinball paradise here in America. How do you help us turn Europe, Australia, Asia into the same pinball paradise? Because um, we're kind of, we, f we feel it's a heavy lifting right now and we could do with some help. Um, so we are starting to uh, find ways to help you. I don't know, Lloyd, are you in here anywhere? Is Lloyd around? Lloyd's not here today. We just hired uh, Lloyd to work on pinball, particularly in Europe, um, and to go around and help us um, do a lot of the things we do in the U.S., right? John, John and his team have Stern Army folks and other folks that are, that are kind of getting the word out there. We, we do notice that uh, particularly Europe is, is lagging behind the U.S. and just how people understand Insider Connected, how they know about it, the Stern Army, all those things, all the stats are much, much lower in Europe. The good news is, is we have a template in the U.S. and typically the same kind of things work. Um, so we are applying resources and we are applying energy and we now do have somebody in Europe, which we've never had before, uh, a person that's actually located in Europe to help move those things forward. Um, so if you, haven't, if you haven't seen them or seen the impact yet, you will soon as we continue to work on kind of boosting all of those things up in Europe. Our, our, our Australian customer, those of you who know Michael Bauer, he does a great job uh, doing all the things that we talk about doing here in America. Um, I'd note, I'd, I'd like to, as I said earlier, I'd like to have the statistics. I'd note the number of visitors at this show and during our tour from Europe, from Australia, from Mexico, Argentina, Brazil, um, and you, you are interested, so we need to do something better. Hi, uh, I'm 55 years old, and I love your theme choices. <laughs> um, my concern, and you mentioned bringing in younger people and so forth, from a non-selfish standpoint, my concern is the theme choices, you know, Metallica, which I love, may not be relevant to a 20-year-old or whatever. So my question to you is, how do you decide on the, the licenses you're going to choose, and how moving, f moving forward in the interest of bringing in younger people, what do you intend to do uh, regarding the theme choices and so forth? Yeah, great question. Um, so our, our theme choices are, are a balance of a few different things. Um, one of them is input and feedback from you all about what you want, um, and that's part of why we did the survey, so that we didn't all have Wait, to argue. do it with inside <laughs> the <laughs> So we don't all have to argue about what you all think. We actually know what you all think. Um, and, and to Gary's point with Insider Connected, we actually know that there are different types of people. Some people own games, some people own a lot of games, some people own less games, some people are casual players. So we're able to understand how different types of players, what their different preferences are, which will give us a little bit more insight into that. So we have you know, input from what people want. We also have uh, the internal input, right? George is never gonna give a designer a game they don't wanna make because you're gonna get a bad game if they don't love that property. So that always factors in. What games do the teams wanna make? What do we think would make good pinball? There's great ideas of concepts of IP out there that would make terrible pinball. We just won't do those either. Um, and then the last one is the licensors. Unfortunately, they get a say. Um, and some of them don't wanna license their IP. Nintendo, call me, you know? So um, there are things like that as well where we know there's great themes out there and there's just, either certain talent, I mean, all of you have seen this on our games before, right, like certain talent that doesn't want to participate and, or their estate doesn't want to participate and there's not really much you can do. So we factored those things as well. So we have a group of folks that get together and bring all of this together. What does everybody want? What do our teams want and think we'll make great pinball and have a great concept for? And, uh, you know, what do the licensors want to do? So as we go through this, we never want it to be one, two, three. We're not going to do like 
three, three bands in a row or anything like that. So it's about finding a balance. The, th the thing, though, is that we really can't do anything right now that's just completely off the mark of the fan base. You, you, you're, it just won't sell, right? So what the, the clever thing to do is find stuff that there's enough people in the current fan base that like and we'll open to a new audience and bring in a new audience as well. So we try to balance things out to, you know, a movie, a band, some different things with a little bit of different appeal. And that's what we're going to continue to to test and do. The more we try to do new things, the more there's a risk that maybe you guys don't love it so much, but you know, we make enough games in the year that we should try some new things and try to help expand pinball. So we will. Uh, let me make two statements. Uh, First of all, uh, you're looking at the the guy who made Orbiter, so I've tried things before and <laughs> and and not been so correct. Uh, but the other thing I want to say is, uh, you, some of you listened to a presentation yesterday on licensing, and I was going to make a comment and didn't get to. Um, what Jody goes through, I do, licensing today is not like Tommy Neiman did it then or it's not like Roger does with slot machines or something. What's in a pinball machine is more assets than any other licensed game, product, whatever it is. You know, a slot machine, three seconds, boom, three seconds, boom. If it runs 10 seconds, it's a shitty slot machine. <laughs> we got three minutes on the average and a lot more than that. And so how many minutes, how much videos in a, in a, 40 minutes of video. They ain't 40 minutes of video in, in any other product, you know, it, it licensed video. There's not 40 minutes in a slot machine of video in a three second video. You know, what these guys go through with, with video, sound, speech, uh, molded toys, artwork on play fields, on back glasses. So I'm leaving a lot of stuff out of here, I know. There's so, sound effects, there's so much more that goes into these games. They're really complex. Um, so when you pick a title, you certainly also want to know you got a very cooperative licensor, which sometimes you get right, and sometimes you don't. <laughs> yeah. I love pinball machines with music. It's now exactly 20 years ago that you make Elvis. When you start a remake version of Elvis? <laughs> 25 is on the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, um, when we made Elvis, it's very interesting. Um, uh, we, uh, we got the music, very strange way we got the music. Uh, we could use the music. They owned the performances that were in the television special. We had about 18 licensors on the songs because somebody owned this part, somebody owned that part. But it was very unique. It was very hard to do uh, on the, on the uh, licensing side. And at that time, we made a limited edition, but we didn't number it because we thought there was too much. Because Shelley didn't want to do it. That's it. That's what it is. For those of you who know Shelley, so that's too hard. Um, I had said to uh, to Elvis Presley Enterprises, it's not the Colonel anymore. I, I had said uh, well, problem, one of the problems was we didn't know who'd get number one, and they they said, well, that's not a problem. Priscilla got num would get number one, so it wasn't an issue. <laughs> you know, so um, interesting concept. Interesting concept. So uh, just one more question. So Gary and um, George and a lot of you that have been in this industry for years, what's the plan? Where's the next Gary? We've got Seth here. We've, where's the next George? Where's the next Greg Frears? Where are all these? Where Where is this next generation of talent coming? The next so Greg Ferris is, you know, we use a lot of artists, uh, different artists you all know that are great. And in, in Greg's seat is Sebastian, who's, who's doing great. Uh, in my seat is this young man, uh, whose background, for you, you who haven't read the, the, the history, he's, I will tell you, he's smarter than I am. He, under, he asks better questions. He knows business te uh, organization, everything better than I do. It's when the entrepreneur turns it over to, to the uh, right manager, it can grow. It needs somebody 
to make it grow in addition to insider connecting. Um, and his undergraduate degrees in accounting and uh, information technology, which thank God, because when we put in the new computer system, uh, there was a little problem. He, he was instrumental in getting it to work. Uh, 10 years at, um, at uh, GE in finance and in, in production. Some, somebody asked me today, they said, well, their son would love to work with, uh, for us. He's getting a, uh, a business undergraduate business degree. And I said, he really ought to work for one of these big companies like GE, because that's where you learn about business and they train these these people to make bigger companies that can do better and, and bigger things. Then he went to Wharton, got his MBA, and then a decade plus at Disney and streaming and games. And unlike me, I was an old pinball player of sorts, he's a gamer. So he's the right one to carry that forward. Michael Donald is our shareholder. He was our CFO. Uh, he's been replaced by Nick, uh, uh, who comes from uh, a lot of bigger, good, better businesses, and, but to me important is what Jim Beam, you know, he's, he's, if, you know we, we, we come from the bar business in a sense. Uh, George's replacement, uh, or is it, George is a young man, he's only 10 years, he's 10 years younger, he's only 69. He's 10 years younger <laughs> than me. We're, it, we're both the June guys. And uh, so, we, you know, we're, we're, we're thinking about that. All of that is important. We, we definitely, uh, well this business is here to stay. It's here to stay and it's here to make better, technologically better games and to grow with insider connecting. <laughs> I have to, Martin, Martin, I have to say next year when we have Gary give us a talk, every time he says insider connected, we're all going to take a drink. <laughs> I'll drink to that, and I will say it a lot. <laughs> so first off, this has been a really fun presentation. I love hearing the business side of pinball and why we're all here and all that kind of stuff. And a question I've had and asked several Stern employees over the last few shows, like Midwest Gaming Classic and since I've been coming to this show in 2019, you guys remind me as a corporation very much so of the WWE in the sense that the WWE, and no, no, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. The WWE, beyond, beyond the apropos of the McMahons or whatever this goes, if you look at them as a corporation, they are an insanely well-run, an insanely great machine. If you go to a WrestleMania, for example, it's like nothing you would see outside of Disney. The question, though, with them, and one of the reasons why they're the juggernaut they are right now, is that in 1999, they made the decision to go public. And I look at you guys as a corporation that would be out the gate a billion dollar IPO, if not more than that. I don't know what your market cap is. I don't know what your you know, inside whatever would be. Is there a possibility of ever Stern going from being mom and pop to being a public corporation? <laughs> I don't consider us a mom-pop corporation anymore. No, no, I'm, I'm serious about this. I don't mean to be you know, you flippant. He's managing this, like, you know, the entrepreneur turns it over. Yes, yes, my partner Dave and I own most of the company, and we control the company, 100% control of it. Um, nonetheless, it is being run like a real company. It's being grown like a real company. It's got systems that Mike O'Donnell and I never put in because we didn't. <laughs> um, yeah, Garrett, Garrett, tell them about the printers when I showed up. Dot matrix <laughs> printers and ERPs from 1985. <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. That's, you know, that's what that's exactly right. Uh, and it's get, the business is secured. Uh, it's not going to go through the devastation of a Lehman Brothers recession. Uh, you know, we, we have control of it. We put control. We've got systems on it. Um, and as to your question of what the ownership will be and how it will be formed, um, this business will continue. And that's, it's, this is it's an advocation is besides a vocation. Pinball is important. Pinball 
is, you know, the world would live, you know, exist without pinball. But a little bit of the fabric of life, certainly for all of us, would be gone. We are going to make sure pinball continues, however that uh, ownership or whatever it is should come about. It will grow. It will get better with technology. And you know what? Can I hear it? Insider connected. <laughs> that is the future of every product is connectivity. I keep saying it, but, you know, he's got it organized. He's getting it organized. And we're making, with George's and his folks, a better product. We're listening to you. We can listen to you. And we can find out wh whether we're asking you a question or we're just watching you play and, and get, you have feedback there. Uh, so it's the world today. Gary, first of all, thank you for Insider Connected. <laughs> and uh, I think the biggest thing, you know, for pinball right now is bringing in new people, casual players, turning them into enthusiasts. And one of the things that I've enjoyed a lot about the machines, especially as of late, is special game modes, like the Jaws Revenge, for instance. It's a totally different way to play. I, You know, 95% of the other games, you got three balls, and as a casual player, you go into a bar, you put a buck in, you drains, okay, next ball, drains. They don't really know what to do. It's it's hard to get into it sometimes um, for your first game. So those special modes, I think, make it easier and more enjoyable for the casual player. So um, do you guys intend to continue promoting those types of game modes, putting those in the games? And um, how else can we leverage that to bring uh, new players to the sport? Yeah, absolutely we do. Um, you know, when based on the response to that, which has obviously been extremely strong, um, what, what George likes to say is his teams like to take cues from each other, right? The, the, the Jaws team came up with that mostly on their own. They, they came up with an idea of what they wanted to do. They knew they wanted to have a mode, and they came up with that mode. But now everybody takes a cue from them, right? You, you watch them do it. You say, oh, I got my own version of something like this that I'm inspired by. So the great thing for us is, or the great thing for me, is I don't have to say, hey, go do that. They're, they're, they're already at the door saying, hey, I want to do this. Um, and so, you know, our design teams are, are part of the community. They're of the community. They, they see the feedback. They get the feedback. And it inspires them to do more and better. Um, I personally think we do need to do more to help new people onboard in a pinball. It's a little tough because of the commercial aspects and what you have to do in a commercial environment and all of that, but I absolutely think there's opportunities for us to continue to look at. I mean, probably a lot of people in this room have seen somebody walk up to a pinball machine, not know how to start the game and not know how to plunge, right? Like, that's still a problem. It seems like it shouldn't be, but it absolutely is. So there's a lot of things like that with, with you know, usability and user experience. I'll, I'll tell you another one. Um, you know, you guys are going to see this. So when I when I first got into this business and really understood what it was to, to have a pinball machine, own a pinball machine, and all, all of that, I was like, wait, what are you guys doing? They were wrapping a bunch of foam inside the play field and putting the glass on. I was like, so wait a second. The person's got to get this home, and the first thing they got to do is take the glass off the game, which is kind of a rite of passage in pinball, but also, right, like, for some of the new folks, that's a really daunting task and not something you would have to do. And it's like, well, you got to get the balls in anyway, so th that's just what you do. Well, on our, on our new Home Edition Plus game that we did at Costco, we said we don't want people to have to do that. We don't want them to have to deal with a sheet of glass. George developed a way for them to just insert the balls when the head's down and just have the balls go in without having to do that. And that's something we're very likely to bring to the commercial games as well. There's a bunch of usability, quality of life things about these games because, you know, they were started as commercial games. It was assumed that everybody had a tool belt and was a commercial person. There's a bunch of things we could do now to just make all that a little easier for people, both playing and owning the games, that we're going to continue to look at, but we're going to look at them without trying to lose kind of what's magical about them right now, and that's kind of the balance we've got to we've got to strike there. It's got to always got to add something, don't I? Um, you know, in a broader sense, but what what he's dis just described, we're going to have new, we're going to increase that. Uh, forging a friendship and, and connecting people by having more people involved with the games, making them less intimidating, uh, like the Costco game, 
and by having uh, people get and Costco game by the way is a lot of fun but that's going to that's going to broaden the market that's going to get new people which hopefully like we we know that 30 40 50 percent of the people who buy their first pinball buy a second one so we're going to increase you're nodding <laughs> thank you uh, yeah so we're going to increase the community by with 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 that game we're going to increase the community with the games and uh, again I, I got to do it you know, you know where I'm going Young gamers, you ask about young gamers getting more people. They all know connectivity. They don't play anything that's not connected. So we're going to hook them with this. We're going to know more about them because we can find out information that's helpful for you and for us. And that connectivity is the future. I mean, I got to tell you, you know, anybody who wants to, you know, buys a brand new electromechanical game, have at it. You know, the old drum, uh, drum units and, and, uh, and People don't want that. They want connectivity. And if we're going to have a future, which we are, it's with connected games. And, and by the way, guys, you know that I'm pitching my product because we're the only ones that can be connected. But that is the future of any product is connectivity. I'm, you know, I told you, I'm going to be the evangelist. I'm on my soapbox. I'm not stopping. I'm investing money in it, and I believe in this because I believe in the future of pinball. I want pinball to have a future. I want young people to get into it, and young people aren't going to pay electromechanical pinball or mechanical pinball that does it isn't connected. We need connectivity, and those of you who operate them know you make more money with the connected games too. <laughs> Here we go, I'll try yeah, again. Much better. <laughs> Woo! Okay. I was saying the um, that I imagine the insider connected pays off for you in terms of collection of user player data, um, driving sales of the games, um, players wanting to continue that experience. Are there other ways? That insider connection is proving valuable and, and put putting money back in your pocket, <laughs> paying you back for that terrific investment you put in. Uh, I mean, like you're saying right now, we're trying to figure out how it helps more people play more games, more people buy more games, and all of that. And that's what we've been sort of mostly focused on to this point. Um, we continue to look at what people want and the different benefits that they want over time, and we'll continue to look at those and figure out what makes sense for everybody with that. But right now, you know, we're pretty focused on figuring out how to connect more people with more games um, with it and, and make better games. Any comment from Gary? Um, he did great. <laughs> uh, I've been told we're out of time, so uh, let's all, all right, say wait, thank wait, you wait, very wait, much. Wait, wait, excuse me, excuse me. The CERN people know what I'm about to do. They didn't know I was going to do this. I'd like your help. We have a vision, and I read it to you once, but I need some help. I'd like you all to read Stern's vision with me, which is to create compelling entertainment that inspires a lifetime love of games, sparks passion, forges friendship, and connects people everywhere through fun, innovative, technologically advanced pinball games and experiences. <laughs>